Now, with that off, we've revealed more of the damage on this front, Valance. 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 Stop it there. Another video on the E30 today. I'm actually getting ready to take out the M40 engine from this car, but I've decided that to do that most easily, I'm going to strip off the front end body panels just to make sure I don't damage them any more than they already are, and to make sure they're out of the way for when I'm pulling the engine out with an engine hoist. Now, what that will do is it will also give me opportunity to assess some of the damage that's on the front end of this car that I've kind of been ignoring up to now. There's, there might be a little story to tell and I want to find out what's actually happened to it. Hopefully we're not going to uncover anything really bizarre. So I'll point you out some of the front end damage and I'll show you about taking off the front end body panels bit by bit so you can see how to do it yourself if you ever take on the same task. Starting right at the very front of the car, and probably the most bizarre bit of damage that I keep looking at is this very odd repair on the front valance. It, it to, at first it looked like somebody had screwed a piece of wood on it to me, but it's not wood, it's plastic. It looks like something you might have used in roofing or something like that. And obviously this front valance has had quite a prang in the past. Someone self-tapped on the brake duct. The fog lights look to have survived, although they're quite cloudy. But yeah, this whole thing was quite damaged. And if you watched the previous video, you might have noticed the damage to the front of the wheel well too. So it must have been a bit of a crunch that. And it's self tapered on as well. And of course the front lip is missing completely, but that's pretty standard fare with these. The front bumper is also looking a bit worse for wear, but nowhere as, big, as bad as the front valance. The headlights and front grille seem to have survived nicely and the kidney grille is in good condition as well, which is great news. Coming up to the bonnet now, there's very obviously a lot going wrong with this bonnet. For starters, the whole thing has clearly been repainted badly at some point in what was probably its original colour, but it looks like it's got no lacquer on it at all. There's also this very strange, almost like solvent pot pattern, which is probably from the terrible paint job it had and there was a nasty paint reaction or something like that and it's all peeled off and it looks bloody atrocious. So other than the terrible paint job, the bonnet seems generally pretty straight. The only real damage other than that I can see is a few nasty patches of rust which, um, which I find quite strange to be honest. I can only imagine the paint came off there and rust started to take hold of the metal underneath. Looking down onto the wing, there's the same strange solvent pop, terrible paint job. And there's also a similar couple of bits of that rust and a bit of a ding there but most notably there's two relatively deep dents on the side there which is quite strange to compound the terrible paint job on the bonnet and wing i also notice when moving around the car there's like a, a ghost image of a, a checkered flag sticker that used to be covering this full corner i suspect it was i think it was off something like the e36 lightweight race car livery where it's like a, a checkered flag pattern here and i'm pretty sure that sticker has been on this car to hide this terrible work this poor paint job actually extends the entire way down the side of the car but it all seems to be below this body line here so there's like a, a hard tape line on this body line and everything below that is terrible with solvent pop from what it looks like. The doors also have some questionable filler work done on it too, but today we're just dealing with the front end. For contrast, you can see the uh, dodgy paint job here versus what I think is the OE paint finish on this wing, which is looking a bit tired and in desperate need of a polish, but it's looking much brighter and much more solid. This side of the car, I think is in original condition, apart from the wheel arch rust that I've already repaired. So this, this side's looking much better than the other. It's going to be very interesting to see what lurks behind these panels. I think we're probably going to find some old crash damage, but hopefully it's just superficial and nothing structural. This car is HPI clear, so I'm hoping there's nothing terminal underneath here. But the objective is to strip off these front end panels ready to start pulling the M40 engine out. So let's start with the bonnet. Quite easy to take the bonnet off these. I've taken this one off before, so I have a pretty good idea of what to do. Uh, it's just a case of taking off the hinge, undoing the stay, unhooking the washer fluid, and also unhooking these electrical lines. I actually don't know what they do, to be honest. Uh, and I've got the old man here to help me out so I don't drop it.
So that's the bonnet off. Now I'm just going to take off the front grill plastics and kidney grills. And it's mostly held on by these metal clips along the top. But there's also a couple of um, Phillips headed screws, which I'm just going to whip out now. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to whip off the headlights. So they have rear covers which we'll just take off there. So I'm going to unplug the connectors and then there's three Phillips head screws from the front and I should be able to take the whole unit out. next thing to do is to try and slide this bumper off. I'm hoping it comes off similar to the one on the rear where I can take out two Humdingen Torx bolts and slide it off the front. Let's find out. Now they are T55 Torx bolts which is quite a large and unusual size and if they're anything like the ones on the rear they're really in tight so I've got the, the big impact gun to help me out with this. Let's see how we go. Well this, that wasn't in tight, it was barely in at all. So that's the front bumper off and that was easy enough. It's just the same as the rear really. The Torx bolts and then it slides off these rails and comes away. Be careful not to pull on the indicator wires because that would be a pain if you snap those. Now with that off, we've revealed more of the damage on this front valance. 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 Now with that bumper off, we've revealed more of the damage on this front valance. And it looks pretty peculiar to be honest. It looks like somebody's hit a bollard right right here in the middle, well not quite in the middle but near enough and it's knocked in the front valance and the metal behind the bumper but it's not gone in so far to interfere with the radiator and the chassis rails look like they haven't moved at all which is great news. There's also some big wadges of filler that somebody's stuck on here. It's almost like whoever was trying to fix this couldn't be asked to take the radiator out to kick it back and have just put something over it and then fillered it in. So the original metal skin's caved in here and it looks like somebody stuck something over the top that's given it its close to its original shape but not quite and then filled it on to match and then put this bit of roofing plastic on as well. Just for fun, I think we should give, give, have a little tug on this and see if it comes off. Ah, so it is metal. It is metal with filler over the top of it. So you can see the crease behind it and then they've stuck a metal panel over and filled it on to match. What a ridiculous repair that is. Next thing I want to do is whip the front wings off and to do that I need to lift the car up and take the wheel off so I can access some of the screws that are hidden behind the arch liner in here. So let's get to that now. All right. 
right there's six fasteners for these for the main arch liner in the front here two of them are those plastic nuts uh, obviously looking pretty rusty so I'm going to give them a bit of a wire brush put some plus gas on and hope for the best and then that should give us the access we need so these are eight so I'm going to try with a small impact do the plastic ones now these are tens they usually come off quite easily so lovely because these are stuck on I'm going to take the secondary liner out and the side of the under tray as well and hopefully that will just enable me to take the rest off So now the whole liner should come out, I hope. So with the arch liner out, I can now see there's two 8mm headed bolts in there that are quite deep in. I've got this uh, silly extension rigged up so I can actually reach into there to undo it but the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just pop off this side repeater so it doesn't get damaged in trying to do that There's another few 8mm headed bolts to be aware of taking the wing off. There's one round here at the front, there's one here, and there's one down here, which looks very rusty. I'm going to have a bit of a time getting that out, I reckon. Uh, there's also this front bumper bracket here, and one of the screws that goes through that appears to hold the wing on too, and that's a 10 and it's from the inside. That also looks quite crusty, but that's, I think we'll get that one out. After that, it'll be the bolts along the top of the wing and then it should come away. So now the ones along the bottom are off, I've also just noticed there's a, a random T25 Torx headed screw in here which I'm going to take off before I then do the top ones. So now I can undo the six 8mm headed bolts that are along the top of the wing. And a quick note here is I can see that this wing's been off before. This is a really common place for an E30 to rust. And quite often you'll find if a wing's been replaced, this seam sealer here will be either missing or broken where the wing's been on and off. And I can see it's this time it's still here but it's broken and I can see that this bolt has been out before.
So I'm, I'm actually pleasantly surprised with the condition of this wing. Having seen the, uh, the dents on the outside of it, I was wondering if we we're going to find uh, some weird repairs inside here. But actually, the dents look like they're not part of a larger accident or anything like that. I, I have no idea how those dents were got, but not a big deal, it turns out. There is a bit of surface rust, but it's only really surface rust. I reckon I'm going to try and knock the dents out of this wing and fix the rust and reuse it. So that's the driver's side wing removed. Wing again looking in decent condition, so I'm intending to reuse that. I had a much harder time on this side. All the heads on the screws were rounding off, which was a nightmare. And I had to get absolutely medieval with this to remove that large screw. I've left that one in for now, I'll take it out later. But yeah, I had to use the angle grinder, which is not what I was hoping to do. Anyway, so with that done, we can move on and start looking at this front balance, which I'm hoping comes off fairly easily. So now the wings are off, it looks like there should only really be four fasteners holding this balance on. Um, and they're all actually four 8mm bolts. There's two in the core support and two hidden behind these brake ducts. So let's see if we can whip those out. The brake ducts are just press fit, so they should come out with a bit of, bit of careful pulling. Just like that. And there it is, our 8mm headed bolt. Right. A whole lot's coming off. Right, at this point, I need to unhook these fog light wires. And there's also some like cable tidies that are connecting the cables along the front. So I need to undo those so I don't yank the wiring out. that off you can get a better look at this dent here and from the back you can see that it's got quite a crease but still I think 
with a bit of sensible, sensible hammer and do dollying, you could get that out. Looks like the way they actually fixed it was harder. You can see whatever they hit has gone through to the lower core support and dented it in a bit, but I think I'll be able to straighten that out to a reasonable standard, plus it's well hidden. So I think that's okay, it could have been a lot worse. So that's all the front end panels removed from the E30. I'm really relieved to find the accident damage is actually pretty minor. The chassis legs look straight as they would have come from the, from the factory. So I'm confident this car has not been in any big smashes like that. And this is a solid, straight, good shell. Uh, but I always knew it would be because having seen some bad E30s, I knew this was going to be a good base for the, for the car I'm trying to build. Worst thing about this job today was actually rusty fasteners in this driver's side wheel well, which was a real pain in the ass as it always is. But they all came out in the end, well, most of them came out, and the ones that didn't come out are now destroyed, so I need to replace them. But that's no big deal. So hopefully if you need to do this same job on your E30, some of this information is actually helpful for you. It's pretty straightforward really. So as mentioned at the start of the video, my main objective for taking these panels off was to maximise my access to the engine bay, ready to start stripping down this engine and pulling it out with the engine hoist. It definitely feels like there's a heck of a lot more access to the engine, so I think it was definitely worth the effort put in to do that. Next time, I'm going to start undoing everything in here, getting ready to crane this engine out, ready for my M52 swap, which will hopefully be in the nearish future. So if you've enjoyed watching this video, please make sure you give us a like and consider subscribing so you don't miss what comes next. Thanks for watching. Perfect.